Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to talk to you about an exciting new battery from the Lee Time product line, and that is their dual purpose 140 amp hour battery. I have been looking for a budget battery that will do cranking and electronics, and this is it. So this is their 140 amp hour dual purpose battery. It is a group 31 size battery. So it's a pretty large footprint. It is a full group 31. So it's, you've got 24s or a couple inches shorter, but this is a, you know, a full replacement for a lot of your, pretty much any boat out there is gonna be running a group 31 size cranking battery. And this guy will drop right in there. 140 amp hours is a ton of power. So that is what the total capacity of the battery is. So you're able to run not only your cranking uh, requirements for your outboard or for your inboard outboard, your stern drive, whatever you're running, but you can also run your radio off of it, your electronics, your fish finders, your whatever you got running off your boat. You can really pull on this thing and it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of capacity in it at 140 amp hours. So, so I don't miss anything. I'm gonna go through and read some of the specs to you. So let's just talk through some of them. Lithium iron phosphate chemistry. This is what we've covered a, a thousand times on this channel. Lots of cycle life out of these batteries, you know, 4,000 cycles, depending on the depth of discharge. And you're able to run them for a very, very long time. When you're talking about a cranking battery in your boat, you know, two years, you're probably thinking about getting rid of it. Not with one of these, you're gonna be able to go a long time with that. So now that we're talking about a cranking battery, uh, a, one of the biggest differences between this battery and like a regular 100 amp hour battery is gonna be on the BMS and being able to manage that current draw coming through it. So these ones are built a bit differently, especially on the BMS side to be able to handle those cranking amps because they can pull quite a bit. From a hot cranking amps standpoint, 1500 amps. You notice your hot day pulling on it, 1500 amp cranking capacity. MCA or your marine cranking, that's a basically above freezing. That's gonna be 1200 amps, more than enough to cover any of the outboards that you're gonna run into. Cold cranking amps at 900. Uh, max continuous discharge current at 1C or 140 amps. That's uh, 1,792 watts, which is a lot. Dimensions wise, it's gonna be 13 inches across, 6.7 inches deep, and eight and a half inches tall. ABS plastic housing, IPS 67 uh, rated here. And then it's got you know your basic features here where we got, it is self-heated. How did I almost forgot that? Okay, so let's talk about some of the features. So it's got your traditional protections. Uh, obviously it's now set up for cranking, so you're gonna have a really high you know, peak output current on it. It's gonna have high temperature protection, low temperature protection, low temperature charge protection, uh, but it doesn't quite need that because it's self-heated. So there's heating elements in here, and why that matters, let's just say you fish up in the north and you fire up your motor on a cold day. If you have low temperature charge protection, it's just not gonna accept that charge. So if you crank it and crank it and crank it, you may not be recharging your battery. Since it's self-heated, once you apply that current to it, or that, well, that higher voltage to it, it's gonna heat itself up and be able to accept that charge in freezing conditions. So it's self-heated. If that matters to you and the climate that you operate in, you definitely need to pay attention to that. You want a self-heated battery, not all of them are. So take a look into that. So I know, uh, you know, just looking on the website, uh, it says that it's uh, you know, up to 225 horsepower rated. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, this is obviously a 115. It spins this motor over just fine. I've been running it, just ran at Tex only yesterday. Uh, we were doing some 13, 15 mile runs, right? So we're running the boat for 20 minutes and it'll charge. I'm looking at the app on my phone. Oh, it's Bluetooth connected, which is fantastic. Move this over here. Um, so it's running, you know, it's charging off the stator of this boat. Uh, not an alternator at 18 to eight amps, depending on what the boat's doing operation wise. Um, so I've had no issues with this boat uh, running this motor with this battery and it is a stator, stator setup. Now it does say in the uh, instructions to, this product does not apply to outboard motors that use a charging coil instead of an alternator. I'm assuming they mean a stator uh, by charging coil um, not sure what the side effect is there. I've not had any issues with it. It's been running fine. Um, what was I talking about with Bluetooth? It's got Bluetooth connectivity. Let's talk about that for a second. So within the first page here, and I'll put up a screenshot of what we're doing. Where is it? No, it's actually right on top of the battery. There's a QR code. Uh, it's probably in the manual as well to be able to download the app. The only thing that's quirky about the app is everything sets up fine. I have multiple lead time batteries with Bluetooth, so I'm able to see each one and label them. 
The only thing's a little quirky about it, it's like when you go into the app, you have to disconnect from it and reconnect from it for it to sync up. And so if you look on it on your phone, you go fishing, you do whatever, you pull it up five hours later, you're gonna have to disconnect, reconnect. It's just two taps of a button, it's not a big deal, but if you open the app, you're gonna wait for it to do something, it's not gonna do anything to you to that. That's the only quirk, I'm sure it's a simple software update, and then they'll get that sorted out. Um, all things considered, I wanna go back to the size of the motor. I think I got off topic with the 115. So on the website, it is rated to a 225 horsepower upward. Like I said, I don't really know what that means. Um, the horsepower rating is one thing. You know, you got different displacement motors, you have different compression ratio motors, you got blown mo uh, supercharged motors. Uh, I went ahead and found something a little bit bigger than that to try this cranking battery on. So I went with a 5.7 liter Hemi V8, which is in my 1972 Plymouth Cuda, about a 425 horsepower engine. So a little bit bigger than most of the outboards that we'll be running into. And let's hear that thing go. <laughs> Okay, so I think we've made our point. Um, I'm really, really happy with this battery. So right now this boat operates off of just two batteries. When I bought it, I had five. I had a cranking battery, I had three trolling motor, 12 volts, and then I had an electronics battery. I now have two batteries in this boat. I have a 36 volt lead time for the trolling motor, and I have this battery here that runs all my electronics. All my graphs on pull about eight amps, so I pull it up in the app. All my graphs running will run it at eight amps. And you know, I run the graphs all day. I go fishing, I run around, it charges a little bit. At the end of the day, I'm at like 87 to 90% state of charge. So nothing to be concerned about. Uh, lots and lots of power available to be able to use for all day of fishing and running your electronics. It makes for a very simple setup in your boat if you go this route. You know, a lot of people these days are running a, a, an AGM or a lead acid cranking battery. And then they've got an electronics battery, then they got the trolling motor batteries. You know, that's more banks to charge. That could be an issue with a charger. To me, if it's not on the boat, it can't fail. And so I've only got two batteries on the boat, two banks of charging to worry about instead of four or five, which I think is really nice. All things considered, uh, I've got no concerns with this battery whatsoever. It's been running fantastic. The price point is awesome. I will have links in the description. Please feel free to let me know down below in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to to test with it or try out or get you some feedback from something. Would love to do that. Thanks for coming along and we'll see you on the next time.